detailed scientists have gathered about the surface of Mars than they have the depths of our own world. But this is what oceanographers strive for. Not only to learn about the waters covering the Earth, but to share that knowledge with others. And a nonprofit company is using personal reality to do what it does that. Here's how it brings people up three deep. Once you break through the surface of the ocean, for you, you will see something shine. It has so much movement. It feels like a transition. Yeah, so some interesting stuff on CNN today about the ocean, how they're mapping the ocean. Um, we're looking today, as you can see, at standard E.6, continuing our discussion about um, supply, demand, equilibrium. Remember that it's going to be a unit. I will be grading 
uh, your chapter four assignments today, which were due on Friday of last. No, they were due, I'm sorry, yesterday. They were due yesterday. I'll be grading them today or tomorrow, um, time permitting, because I have meetings after school, after I get out of class today. So uh, time permitting, it will be um, today or tomorrow that I'll get those graded. I have graded your projects. They're in the computer. Remember, if you are um, late turning that project in, you need to send me an email in Schoology. Most of them I've managed to catch if they've been uh, turned in, but I do need you to uh, send me that message in Schoology if you are late on your assignment. All right, let's dive into our discussion today. Everything that we talked about for Chapter 4, everything that we talked about for Chapter 4 will be applied to Chapter 5. So literally everything that we looked at for the whole chapter for Chapter 4 is going to be condensed into one section for Chapter 5. So it's going to seem like a lot of information. It's going to seem like we have talked about this before, but we're no longer talking about it from the uh, demand side. We're talking about it from the supply side. So we're looking at the business um, aspect of supply and demand now instead of our consumer um, role in that supply and demand. All right, so let's take a quick look at our YouTube video and then we're going to dive into our um, discussion for the day, okay? You are now muted. Stay recording. What do you need? Now I need you to do some schoolwork. But I've got your laptop. All right, guys, so a lot of that should look familiar to you, okay, because you're like, oh, wait, we talked about how price affects demand. Well, we are, or we have. Today, we're looking at how price affects supply. Remember, with our law of demand, we said as price goes up, the amount that we 
supply or the mouth of me demand goes down well you should have noticed in the video guys that in the video it says price as price increases the amount they supply increases why is that why is it that they would want to supply more goods at a higher price type what you think in the chat box why would they want to supply more goods at a higher price That's right, Harper. Make more money. The more that they can supply at a higher price, they're going to make more money. Okay. What we're going to see with this chapter is that kind of conflicts everything that we talked about last chapter, right? Everything that we talked about with us, the consumers, is going to be right the opposite with, with uh, supply. So we're going to see how the slope of the curve is very different. It's going to be an upward sloping curve versus a downward sloping curve because of what the law of supply is going to say. As we go through our discussion today, guys, we're gonna, I'm gonna do like what I always do and stop and pause and we're gonna discuss each section. And then uh, we'll wrap it up at the end. So let's take a look at our discussion. You are now muted. Good morning. Economic system. So students will be able to analyze the effects of the supply of goods on the economy. So we're looking at the supply side and how price affects how much they are willing and able to supply. Think back to last chapter. Last chapter we looked at demand as a part of microeconomics. This chapter we will continue the study of microeconomics. And remember, microeconomics was uh, looking at individuals in our decision making behavior. And so this would be the sellers as individuals and their decision making behavior and how it affects or is affected by price of a good. Not only price of good, but price of items that they need to make their products. So to start off, we have to look at supply. Yeah, what you're going to see is that a lot of this looks very, very familiar. Okay, the way it's laid out, the concepts that we're going to study, supply, law of supply, changing quantity supply, changing, uh, changing supply, the determinants of supply. You can all that last chapter. So now we're looking at the business side, and supply is the quantity of goods a business is willing and able to sell at. Various prices. So we talked last chapter that in the demand, it is a consumer's willingness and ability to buy a
All right, guys. So what we've seen so far is that we're looking at a direct opposite of what we've been talking about with our demand, right? And as Harper has been saying in the uh, comment section is that without the consumers, this is basically just theory, okay? It is useless without consumers because without the consumers us buying the goods, then they have no reason to supply the goods, right? Also, we have to take into account here, guys, that there is going to be a happy medium, okay? There's going to be a point where everybody is happy, where we're going to find the goods that we want at a good, at a good price. They're going to find the goods that they want to sell at the price that they would like to sell it at, and everybody's happy. That's what we're going to look at in Chapter 6. So what we see with supply is that it is a direct relationship, okay, where demand was, was inverse. Supply is going to be direct. Price increases, quantity increases. Supply decreases, price decreases. Quantity supplied will decrease as well. Okay, it is a direct relationship. One goes up, one goes down. That is why we have a upward sloping curve. The easiest way to remember it is supply to the sky. Okay, supply to the sky is the easiest way to remember the slope of the curve. And it's all about because of what the law of supply says. Price increases, quantity as price goes up, quantity goes up as well. Okay, that is why supply is always an upper sloping curve. Now it's not always gonna be perfectly flat. It can have an arc, it can have a deep step, a, 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 light, a light slope, a steep slope. The shape doesn't matter. It's the fact that it is going upward that is the that is the uh, comparison here. Now I did show you this because this example here would be a straight line. Okay, that's the reason I gave you this example here. But it would be a straight line when we're looking at um, this this particular demand or supply schedule. All right, so let's finish up our uh, or continue on with our discussion rather. You are now muted. As price increased, our quantity increased as well. Chapter six, we're looking at how do we get to that happy medium? 
in place. We call that the delivery. We'll discuss that in next chapter. And so we're going to be looking at why white on the earth remains with another point of the earth. And there's that point of the earth. All right, so let's take a let's take a look real quick. I'm going to go back to this example here. All right, so when we talked about chapter four and we were looking at a change in price, okay, we said that with with change in quantity demanded, the only thing that changed was the what? It was the price. We were comparing two prices on the same curve, and we wanted to know how price affects the curve right how did it affect the movement between one point and another that's exactly what we're looking at here guys all right so with a change in supply we're comparing two points on excuse me changing quantity supplied we're looking at two points on the same curve now if i were to tell you we were going from point a to point b point a to point b ten dollars to eight dollars would that be going up in quantity supplied or down in quantity supplied right harper down we're going down in quantity supplied so that is going to be a decrease in our quantity supplied right now i can Hang on, y'all. Okay. So, too many buttons here. All right. So, we're moving from point A to point B. Now, guys, I told you, if it is a decrease, our decrease is always pointing to which direction? The arrow would always point to which direction? Does anybody remember? Remember, this is a timeline. Okay, this is a timeline. I know it's kind of harder for us to do this virtually, and I'm we're doing the best we can with what we got here, guys. All right, so if we were to, and I can't draw on this thing like I can the other, but okay. Um, let's see. I don't think my little button will come up. Okay, guys, so it is what it is. All right, so, all right. Remember how I told you that the all right so we're going from ten dollars here and i wish you could see the little arrow let me see if i can back the video up before we get there okay all right guys so we're going from ten dollars to eight dollars now law of supply says price goes down quantity does what goes down right so our arrow is pointing which direction this arrow here going from ten dollars to eight dollars down or to the left right a decrease guys remember i told you a decrease in anything is going to be to the left on your number curve on your number line an increase is always going to be to the right on your number line why is that because this is nothing more than a number line right we're going from five on our number line here to four on the number line here because we're going from ten dollars to eight dollars so our arrow is going to point to the left decrease is always going to be to the left now if we were to reverse this law of supply says we go up in price we go up in quantity so if we were to go from eight dollars to ten dollars that would be from point b to point a here would be going from four to five that's going to be an increase in quantity supply and we would be going up our number line okay so our arrow here would be pointing to the right that does not change, guys. Remember, that is the same no matter if we're talking about supply or demand. All right. And if we were had the ability to graph, it would be somewhere. And I could show you on the graph 
as doing it together would be so much easier for you to understand. But just know that a change in price does affect how much we of something that is either sold or purchased based on what the law says. If we're talking about demand, law of demand says price goes up, quantity goes down. Law of supply says price goes up, quantity goes up. So remember those are symbols that you had to know for your quiz and you will see those symbols again on your next quiz for chapter five. All right, so let's take a look and continue on with our discussion here. Let me get back where we were, y'all. All right.
is willing to supply us at a great price. And that's how much you can call me. Determining all right guys so i know it seems like i keep repeating the fact that the increases to the right and decreases to the left because it is extremely important what the law uh what the ch uh change in supply looks at guys is something external remember change in quantity supplied only price changes okay so with the price changes and we're changing and we're looking at the correlation between price and quantity there now in the change in supply it is an external factor affecting how much they will supply at every price price doesn't change okay price is not changing at all what changes is the quantity they're going to supply because of these external factors and we're going to look at all of them but with that increase in supply, the increase is always going to be to the right because it is uh, up the number line. Decrease is always going to be to the left because it is going down the number line. All right. And you keep thinking, Miss Harris, what in the world are you talking about the number line? Guys, if this was an axis here, then this x axis here is a number line, right? It's nothing more than a number line. One, two, three, four, five. It would be a number line. It would have a quantity assigned to each point. All right. Just like you would graph in math and you would go up the number line, down the number line. Same concept here, y'all. So let's take a look at which, uh, what external factors affect how much we are supplying. You are now muted. Yes, there are a bunch of them. And technology affects how much they can supply. And there are sellers. Produce your expectations. Down, 
Here's a question. Could I have easily used the example of minimum wage going to $15 an hour here? Would that scenario apply to this situation? Okay, guys, remember any factor of production increase in price it will increase the price of a good. Somebody tried to argue me with me on Facebook the other day, and I ended up unfriending them because, quite frankly, I've been teaching this for 16 years, and I can tell you for a matter of, with a matter of fact, okay, with a matter of fact, that if the cost of making the good goes up, they are either one going to pass the cost of the good along to the supplier uh, to the consumer, which are we going to buy it at a high price? Uh -uh. or two, they're going to cut down on the supply of goods, okay, or both. They're going to have to increase the price of the good because the cost of making the good goes up. No matter what we're talking about, we could be talking about uh, any of the factors of production, capital, entrepreneur, land, labor, right? We fall into the labor category. So if any one of those four factors goes up in cost to make it, or decrease employment. You're exactly correct, Harper. They're gonna they're gonna employ fewer people at that fifteen dollars an hour than they would at the eight dollars or nine dollars. Now, I will say that Chick Fil A does a very good job of um, paying their employees. But yes, they would supply. They would have less employees on roll to make those goods. Okay. So that it, minimum wage would be a huge factor when we're looking at this particular um, determinant of supply. You are now muted.
Okay, guys, I'm going to stop it there to uh, give you another example. Okay, my printer. All right, I have a simple Canon printer. Okay. 
the Canon printer I have, the ink for it is almost non-existent to find. Why do you think that is? It's not that they don't make it anymore. It's not that my printer's obsolete. But why is it that it would be so hard to find the ink for my printer right now? Ah, my printer's not old. The printer itself is only about a year old. Printer's not that old. But what happened, guys, is during the pandemic, y'all, like the natural disaster of the pandemic caused them to pause making it, right? They weren't making it, and everybody kept using it. Now it's hard to find. Okay, so that natural disaster, same thing with tomatoes, y'all. I never saw a day where I, I thought I'd see a day where there was no tomato, canned tomatoes on the shelf. But because they weren't growing them and producing them during the summer, now we're seeing that shortage. Okay, so natural disasters have a huge impact on our supply of goods.